Alright, welcome back to the Hub Family Vlog featuring the most famous Hub of them all. How that is doing? the truth. She is the most famous. Hey yo! New week! New week! New week! New week! I had a great call with the marketing team this morning for my book. Woo woo! And then I just did a podcast with Kelsey Grimm and it was really good. She is like the big sister everyone needs in their life. So that was fun. And what did you just do? I just recorded a trailer for my new soon to be something. Stay tuned, folks. Stay tuned. Work, 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 work. Yeah, I gotta get back to it. Okay, bye. So this was a great week. We had a lot of fun things and we, we were in a town lot, a little bit more than the last two weeks. So we kind of started off, like we said last week, we couldn't really tell y'all where we went, or we told you where we went, but why. But why we were going. One of my besties got engaged, and I'm so excited for her in Nashville, so that was a blast. Yep. And then we got back and kicked our week off with... Bond. James Bond. Was that good? That was good. <laughs> you said that, that was, was good. good. Wow. Okay, without giving anything away. That was incredible. That was everything. That was, crazy. that was everything you wanted in the movie and more. No time to die. No time to die. All right, rate the movie yeah. one to ten. Ten. Oh, definitely a ten. Well, it was. I don't know if I want to say it was my favorite, but it, it was my favorite. It was pretty awesome, and I don't know if it was like sentimental that it was Daniel Craig's last one playing him. But I thought it was legit. I loved it. Yeah, it was so good, honestly. And I was like, this is just like not, this is not a very women empowering movie, okay? He's kind of a womanizer and I like don't agree with a lot of things he did morally and I couldn't get past it. But then this movie, he's like a family guy and like he's so sweet and so then I really liked it. He's um, James freaking Bond. I know, it was really good. But oh. before that, we actually had her first football game. Oh, I forgot. Yeah, yeah, that was her first little football. Yeah. She was a Liberty Flame. We went to the Liberty yeah. ULM game. And Good. ULM actually won, which is actually pretty crazy. Which is University of Liberty was favored like Louisiana 32 Monroe. and a half. And ULM beat them by a field goal. Yeah, so we went, um, that's in Monroe, ULM's in Monroe, and yeah. then Liberty is in Virginia, but my siblings all go to Liberty. I actually took a semester from Liberty, go hey, Flames. Yeah. And so we went, and it was really fun. We got to go friends. That was her yeah. first official football game. Rebecca's costume party. We, oh, Batman. We had a super fun party because it was my sister Rebecca's birthday. We yeah. actually had two parties that day because John Shepard's yeah. birthday. Yeah, and then it was cake for that. Yes, and then it was Rebecca's birthday party. And what did we do, honey? We dressed up. Mm -hmm. Remember when you were Tinkerbell? And we have Wendy. And she was Tinkerbell, but now she's pajama girl because she's so tired. Dolly and Willie. Oh yeah. Put your mask on. Oh no. We have Sasquatch and we have a hunter in the same room. Working nine to five, what a way to make a living. There's no getting back. <laughs> Woo! The one and only Dolly Parton. I married the sexiest Wendy. After that, Christian and I got to go on an incredible trip, but I have to say it was our first time leaving Honey, which of course was so sad because how in the world could we leave this little thing? And it's so sad. I've actually literally already back, almost backed out like four times and Christian's like, no, this is gonna be good. You need to go. It's a leadership retreat. So um, I know it's gonna be good, but I'm just like not ready to leave her. She's my little best friend. It's so sad. She's just back there talking. She's she's fine, but it's so hard. Bye, honey. Bye, bye little bear. Fun. I love you. Gonna have a good time. <laughs> oh, oh, yes. oh yeah, yeah, you love it. Jackson Hole. We love Jackson Hole. We've only been once, and last time we were here, we conceived a child. Oh, you're supposed to say it more nonchalant. Like I was gonna say, like, what? let's just say if Honey was a boy, his it might be Jackson. Whoa, whoa. That was so true. It's so good. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Welcome, cowboy. Welcome, cowboy. 
And the reason why like we really wanted to go is because it was a leadership retreat where basically they brought all of these leaders together who are like not not in the Christian world. Not religion. ministry like, people. There are definitely like Christian people who love the Lord, but like through all different types of like yeah. spheres in life. Like, like private like, equity people, big tech, just investors, um, like just the smartest Google execs, just the smartest people ever. And then of course like us. And then there was like, like us there. We love social media and <laughs> blogging and podcasts and so, but hey, we're all, you know, loving the Lord, serving the Lord. That's what I like to tell people is like, it doesn't matter like what you do, it's, it's you know, how you do it. It doesn't matter if you're, mm -hmm. You know, your job is actually in ministry. The point is your job is your ministry. And so if you're in big tech, if you're, um, you know, happen to be an engineer, if you are in ministry, if you're a podcaster, if you're a nurse, if you're a teacher, like it doesn't matter. Like how can we work together as the body of Christ to spread the gospel? And that was like a really cool eye-opening thing. And it was that like, was so cool. don't lay down on yourself just because you might feel like the dumbest person in the room or that you might feel like, how could I make an impact? This guy's over here like, you know, literally building rockets and like yeah. I'm just sitting here one of the like, guys was like casually like yeah we just we were in the works of making a drug that'll cure, uh, cure Alzheimer's. Alzheimer's like just like mind-blowing things people. and like you know I'm sitting here and I'm like okay I, I'm you know about to do my vlog but like that still makes an impact too and so it's just a reminder that like the body has to work together and so yeah. we talked about like how do we reach the nations with the gospel it was the unreached really parts. the unreached parts and it was really just an amazing conversation and one that i think we should all ask ourselves you know like how can you like take whatever you're doing and like your circle of people and you know move the work of jesus further you know the reason why we're so passionate about this is because we believe that jesus is the only hope that we have in this world you know this world is like it's bad okay at times yes there's good things about it but like you know, there's sickness, there is um, like, death and there's poverty. death, there's poverty, there's murder, Ooh, there's, oh, oh. oh gosh, that, and there's babies spinning there's up. There's babies spinning up <laughs> all the gross. time. You wanna grab a rag? Yes. Hey, we did say we were welcoming you into our home, that, and that is here it is, unfiltered. But anyways, there's a lot of things that just like, causes like hardship. And we know that like we have hope in Jesus. And what that hope means is like God sent his son to the earth because he loved us so much to forgive us of our sins and give us a hope of an eternal heaven. Like that's amazing. Mm -hmm. And like through that, it's not just the hope of heaven, like of one day to come, but God actually gives us the fruit of who he is now, like heaven on earth. And what that looks like is like peace, even whenever like we live in an anxious world. It looks like joy, even whenever we live in a world where, you know, honestly, a lot of times you just want to cry. It looks like knowing that you hold the victory even when in life you feel like you're losing yeah. and so why do we feel passionate about getting the gospel is because we want people to know that there's hope we want people to know that you know you can feel love and joy and peace even like no matter what your circumstance is and so she said amen she said, amen. Amen. amen hallelujah you are charismatic you are <laughs> hey where are we we are at a barn in jackson hole it's pretty cool, huh? This is awesome. This is incredible. One of the things we also did on the trip was we went to this big barn, and in it was this like horse whisperer guy. Mm -hmm. And Sadie thought it was literally the coolest thing ever. It was the coolest thing ever. And I learned so much from it, and I wanted to share some of it with you. So basically, um, this guy, he's like known as the horse whisperer, and he's not the first. He's like the He's like second, the junior. But he was so sweet, and like his whole thing was the things that God has taught him through training horses. Mm -hmm. And he talked about how like you know, used to, to train a horse, it was actually kind of an abusive process, even though they didn't know they were being abusive because they just didn't know there was a better way to train them. But now that they know there's a better way, they do better. Mm -hmm. And I think even that in and of itself is like, sometimes we have to realize like, maybe we're not doing things the right way. Maybe there's a better way to do this. And so, you know, he started thinking like, okay, how can I do this? How can I lead better? How can I train these horses? And he realized he can do it with just like a gentle whisper, with just the smallest touch. And he started out by showing us this horse that like already had the training. And he was like, even if I just think about him looking to the right, he'll look to the right. So he kind of like did this with his hand and the horse looked to the right. This is what happens after the horse begins to trust me. So now I'm gonna show you what it looks like with a new beginner horse who hasn't been trained. He's a stallion. So he brings the stallion out and the stallion is crazy, y'all. It was like, 
it was like running all around. It was scared of the um, horse whisperer. It was scared of us. It was kicking, bucking. It was crazy. And we're like, oh gosh, like how are you about to train him? So he's the first one I have to do those before I can even work with this horse. I have to know that this ho horse has humility because mm -hmm. unless the horse has humility, it will never walk in obedience. It's never gonna walk with willingness. And those are literally his words. Mm -hmm. And I was like, man, that is exactly how it is with God. Like unless we show God that we have humility, that we'll, you know, you know, bow in submission to Him in our life. You know, it might feel scary, you might want to rebel, you might want to buck, you might want to go crazy, but like have a little humility to say like, I need to be led by someone and like I want to be submitted to you, God, because mm -hmm. your humility is going to show God your willingness. Mm -hmm. So then from that point on, he did so many different things with the horse and by the end of it, this horse that at first was bucking at him and didn't trust him and was running around in its own terms, ended up literally trusting him and being able to be um, guided by the horse um, whisperer. Mm -hmm. Y'all, it just was such a symbolic example of what our life with Christ can look like. It's like, learn to trust God. And how you do that is letting God touch you, letting God lead you and following His having lead. Having that humility. Having that humility. And then you'll be able to see that like God has the best interest for you. God's, God's trying to get you to your full potential, your, your wholeness in mm -hmm. Him. You can take something so broken, so reckless, so wild, and you can turn it into something good once someone learns to trust God with their mm -hmm. life. And so, you know, maybe that's you today. Maybe you're the wild stallion out there and you're like, I can't trust God with my life. Like I'm running around, but honestly, it feels reckless. Honestly, it feels crazy, um, but I need to have, <laughs> but I need to have a lead. I need to have a leader in my life. Um, I just encourage you so much to let God lead. Have that humility today to say, you know what? I don't need to be in control of my life because I don't know where I'm going. But God, I'm gonna let you lead. And so start with the humility mm -hmm. and um, your humility is showing your willingness. But anyways, it was such a good week. And that I was, just, it was one of our favorite trips. Yeah. It was one of our favorite trips. So I just awesome. like so strongly encourage you guys um, to take that lesson today in your own life. And also the lesson that like, hey, whatever you're doing, like do it on purpose love mm -hmm. god love people do it with the mission in mind to spread hope into the world to spread light into the world uh, yeah. because that's what makes the world a better place <clears throat> it's not looking around and saying like i hope somebody does something like you do something yeah, we're all know? called to be on that mission yeah honey said i'm on mission are you on mission you are on mission aren't you do you have any final words hey do you have any final words hey he said, thanks for watching our vlog! <laughs> <laughs> I missed. <laughs>